It has been one of our biggest struggles, collecting email addresses during phone calls using voice AI. I cannot tell you how many times we were in the situation where a customer asked us to collect email addresses during a phone call using the voice AI assistant, and it was just not possible or not reliable because the email was most likely spelled wrongly and it was just invalid. This is actually an incredibly common issue that we see in our agency literally every single week and until now, we didn't have a good solution. Luckily, since you're watching that, this is going to change both for you and for us because we came up over the past couple of weeks with a solution that actually has a pretty high success rate. Still, I need to mention it is high, it is not 100%, but it is a lot better than everything else we've seen on the market so far. And you'll be surprised how easy the solution is and how easily you can implement it. Now, in this video, I'm not only going to show you the solution, I'm also going to back it up with data that we use to analyze how well it actually works and with which versions and what we did to make it work and the best of all you will get access to all of this completely for free so that you can take advantage of it by yourself for your agency for your very own projects however that looks like now all the images and the prompts you're going to see in this video they will be available completely for free directly inside of my resource hub so simply head over to hub.integraticos.com create an account if you don't have already one and download those resources and follow me along on the screen and lastly if you don't know who i am my name is janis moore i run an ai agency that helps people create amazing voice assistants and we are right now on a mission to help people educate themselves in the voice AI space, which we're going to slightly touch at the end of the video, so stay tuned. Now, to get you a better idea how this whole thing looks like and what the actual problem is, let's dive right on the screen so I can show you something live there, which we're going to also use to extract the emails properly from. Now, what you can see here is a demo example of a transcript that you probably get with any kind of voice provider out there. Might be VAPI, Bland, Retail, whatever that looks like. And you can see that you have a user message, the assistant answers, the user answers, the assistant answers, etc. And as you can see here in the transcript, we have an email, or let's at least call it sort of email, right? Because it's not actually an email, it is a conversational text that contains an email, but it's not verified or validated as a proper email. Mary, um, Jane-1980 at yahoo.com. That's something you would probably say during a conversation, and the transcriber picks them up as separate words, and it would spit out something like this. Now, if you just drop this into something like um, GPT-40, it is most likely not gonna work. It will not get the email out properly and definitely not reliably. Getting an email out of a text string that looks like this was incredibly hard. Now, this was the problem we were always facing, right? Because if you try to collect an email after the conversation or maybe even during the conversation, which is even harder, getting the email from a text string like this will most likely fail or what you have done and what we have done in the past was we basically just repeated that email back to the user and the user can then say, yeah, that's correct or no, that's not correct. And then they run through the same cycle again, which obviously caused a lot of frustrations because many times those emails didn't work properly. So what I'm going to show you now is more of a combination of different things that allow us to actually get the email quite reliably. And we are going to do this through a nice set of promptings and using specific models. Now, the whole magic behind that is that we need to have a model available that is reliable enough and has a really, really good reasoning of understanding what happens inside of a conversation so that it gets and catches the thing that this here is actually an email address. Now, from what we have figured out so far, the best version of models that you can use for getting the email address is OpenAI's O1 Preview. And I say specifically Preview because with the mini version, we have seen a slightly decreased accuracy, which obviously is also very subjective because it depends on the emails that you usually deal with on a regular basis. But we come to that very soon. The first question that might pop up in your case is like, why O1 in the first place, right? What does O1 actually mean? And why is O1 better than something like 4.0? So if you have followed OpenAI, you know that the O1 version was released with the aim to have a better reasoning and understanding of the prompts. So it can basically question and think for itself before actually giving you an answer. Now, the good thing with this is you can have more precise answers that are often also more in-depth and actually follow your prompt properly. The negative part of that is that it takes quite a long time. Now, that is one of the reasons why this during a phone call doesn't make a lot of sense. And that's like the first thing that you need to follow. Don't adjust the emails during the conversation. Simply let the user repeat the email once or, or mention the email once. Don't repeat it, just say it once. And that's all you need to do. That's the most very important thing because those responses with O1 take so long. Now, because those models have advanced reasoning, you can imagine that they can question themselves if they did a good job or if what they have done in the first place was accurate and, and good, which again just increases our chances of actually getting a valid email out of it. Now with that out of the way, there's the next part, which is the layer on top of O1, which is going to be prompt engineering. So we need to obviously have a proper prompt that instructs O1 
to do something with the transcript that we give it to. Now, if you've been using 4.0, 4.0 mini or 3.5 or any other of the versions or models of OpenAI, you know that 01 has a completely different prompting structure. There, you don't help it with guidance. You give it clean instructions and you let the AI figure out the stuff by itself. And we tried a lot over the past couple of weeks to make this work. And what I'm going to show you today and going to share with you today inside of my research hub is a prompt that we used actually inside of live environments to extract emails reliably with more than a 90% success rate. And with 90%, I really mean 90%. There's obviously still the issue that the user misspells something or the AI maybe understands something wrong, which would also affect the quality of that. But if the user is clear and precise about mentioning their email address, it is very, very easily you will most likely get that even to 98%. Now to demonstrate that, how that looks like, what we are going to do is we are going to copy this prompt that I created right here or the transcript basically from Vapi. And we are heading over to our chat playground where I've already prepared a prompt template that you will also find inside of the resource hub, which looks something like this. Now you will see that here there's a placeholder, which I've already removed because that's where we're going to paste the content of the transcript that we actually want to analyze. And to, get, to give you some guidance on how this prompt template actually looks like, we are very clear about it. We, we ask it specifically to extract and normalize the email addresses from the following user messages. And I mentioned user messages because we're going to post a transcript which also contains assistant messages. So if you don't want to capture assistant messages, which you most likely won't, having this on user messages is a lot better. Then we also define the return format, which in that case is more specific to us because I'm literally giving you the example we use for our APIs. So you can get the exact structure, which will definitely help you in the long run. If you just want the email, you might even you might not even need the JSON structure we have right here. But for the sake of this video and for the sake of providing you more value, I left it in there so you get a better understanding. Now, I've also given it a little bit of context to just make sure it understands that the content we provide is actually coming from speech to text, which in our case just increase the accuracy a little bit more because the AI understood, aha, uh -huh, this comes from a transcript, which means we need to interpret filler words and stuff like that better. We've also mentioned filler words because that is one of the big things that we have seen inside of our agency for the people we implemented that so far, that this caused a lot of trouble. Now, this is just standard stuff at the very end. We don't need to go into that, but all we are going to do now is we paste the transcript that we just copied right within here. And as you can see, you remember, we have the email right here, which in perfect case would be Mary Jane, then a dash 1980 at yahoo.com as a proper email. Now, all I'm gonna do is I click run. By the way, mention here the 01 preview model, which is a bit more accurate than the 01 mini. But once that ran, and it might take a couple of seconds, you will see that we extract the email properly alongside with something else, which is here the reference email, which I'm going to go into in a second once we actually have the answer, because I guess then the whole thing will be more clear as well. All right, there we go. Now it's here. And you can see that it extracted the email properly. This is literally the exact way of how we would like to it to have written. That's as well the way the user um, spelled it. Even though he mentioned in here, um, so basically just some filler words, the AI properly interpreted that and gave us back a really valid email address, which is awesome, right? And now back to the reference email. That's exactly why I kept this JSON thing in there because I think it's important to understand. We like to always keep a reference on where exactly this thing occurred inside of the message. So now if I copy that string and I search for it, oh, I need to search here. You will see that it highlights it right up here, which means we can directly address where in the transcript this email was and how it initially looked like compared to the actual email. Now this allows us to replace the stuff in the transcript to give a better accuracy for the transcripts themselves and as well for training other models by exporting them and training data sets, which is the reason why we have, why I haven't made this video in the first place because we made this over the past couple of calls, over quite a lot of calls, and we analyzed the email addresses that we get out of it, and we ran them through tons of tests to figure out how reliably which version is and what it does. Now, the way we have done that is by extracting the email addresses the way we did it here. We compare them to each other, meaning we have the initial email address, which is the most likely accurate one. So we have verified that obviously previously, and then we send the reference email back again to an LLM with a specific model, and we see what comes back and then we compare it to the initial one, so the correct one where we definitely know is correct, and see whether or not it was successful. Now we have done that in a programmatic way, which looks something like this. So you can see in that small case or that small chunk, we have tested a total of 50 emails, we have matched 41 emails, and we have a match percentage of 82%. Now this test has been done with O1 Mini, as you can see. So O1 Mini is not as good in extracting all of the email addresses even though it's subjective, and that's something I need to mention at the end of the video, so definitely stay tuned because you don't want to miss out on that info. 
but you can see that it matched 82%, which is already way better than anything else the other versions could have provided. And you also have to imagine that the data you see here is not always live data. Those are also synthetic. So obviously we don't extract all of the user details and send them to some LLM. We also create synthetic data based on the user inputs. So we feed in some actual email addresses and we tell it to create some some alternatives and similar email addresses to that, to them with different domains, etc. And we feed those in the LLM and do training on top of it and do analysis on top of it to see how well it works. That's kind of like the gist of it. Now, the main thing in which I think is like the coolest one to see is our output right here, which kind of compares all of the versions and how well they worked. So you can see down here, we have like the percentage to 100%. This is always where we are aiming for, right? We want to make sure we get as many correct emails out of the conversation as possible. So aiming for 100% is always the optimum. And down here we have the versions that we tested with and you can see that O1 Preview did by far the best. Now I still have to mention that there is something, there's some trial and error that we still need to figure out because this is a very new solution and we just started to implementing this last month. But there is a thing that we most likely, that we often switch between mini and preview to see where we get the best outcome with the emails that actually come in for the users. Because in some cases of the voice assistants we implemented, we actually saw that O1 Mini had a 100% accuracy, which is crazy and way better than Preview, right? But that was only for a specific set of people where we built the agents for. So the majority of things, especially if you have complex cases and you also switch with multiple languages, O1 Preview is probably still your best bet. As you can see here with 92%, that is already ridiculously good compared to what we previously had. And if you look into something like 4O Mini with 58% or even GPT 3.5 Turbo, this is way lower and this is something I'll probably not offer to any client because having a 58% success rate on getting an email, it's still a ton of manual work, especially if you have a lot of phone calls. Now, in the end, we are still testing. We're still doing, we're still putting in tons of work to figure out what is the best way of making these things work. So when you look at those numbers, always take them more as guidance and not as an absolute fact, because even though we tested them and we actually have the results here, it is still better for yourself to make your very own tests with it. So you can also even try a lot of the other models as a secondary model, just to compare how well it works, because you usually analyze them after the transcript. That's another thing I haven't mentioned yet, actually. I'm gonna go into this in a second. But just keep in mind that if you have a certain set of instructions in your prompts, and you extract something afterwards, and your, your prompt structure or your conversation follows a certain way, it might be even that some of the other models in here are better than O1 Mini or O1 Preview. That's always something you definitely have to try for yourself to get the best values. And obviously I'd be more than excited to see how you test this stuff and what you do with this information you have now, because I believe it's going to be a game changer for everyone that actually wants to collect email addresses. Now to the point that I mentioned right now, or a couple of seconds ago, there's still the thing that because if you are using something like O1 Preview or O1 Mini, which are really high, that they still take a lot of time. So having them analyze an email during a call is usually not a good thing. I mean, you can do that if it's an asynchronous tool call, so you don't wait for a response. But if you wait for a response, this might take you 15, 20, 30 seconds until you get an answer back, which is way too much for a phone call. So what we always do is we do post analysis of the transcript that we get out of it to locate the email address and extract it. And we have seen a lot of more success with that and obviously more satisfaction with the customers and the people that we are calling. Now, one thing that I just noticed here is that 84% was set for 4.0, which makes sense in that case because we used a synthetic data set for that and 4.0 is was the model that we used to generate the synthetic data set. And we compared that as well with the one of 0.1 Preview, which was kind of the same. Um, with 0.1 Preview generated data sets, uh, GPT 4.0 was lower than this, but this was in our opinion, the best graph because it was the biggest data sets. We tested that with thousands of numbers, uh, with thousands of emails. And these results are pretty good with that data set. Now, like I mentioned, if you use live data, this definitely looks different. It looks different depending on your use case, your audience, the conversation, how well it goes, it, the length of it, there's like tons of variables. So take them with a grain of salt, understand what we did here, so you can implement it for your own company or for your clients, obviously. All right, I think that's already a lot of information I have for you here, and I really hope it was helpful and gives you some insights on how you can collect email addresses for yourself, for your clients, and that in a more reliable way. And I'm pretty sure with the new versions that OpenAI is going to release soon, this is going to be a game changer because it helps us to extract emails a lot more reliable. Now, since you're still here, first of all, thank you very much for watching. I really appreciate your time. And it seems like you're really interested in voice AI, which is why I'd like to give you an opportunity that no one else has right now, 
because it's still not out there. Me and my team, we have been working on a program about voice AI that is going to change the whole game on how people currently build voice AI agents and how good they are with what they do. Because we've seen a lack of knowledge there and we want to get over that and help you make more money with it, help you build your own agency or maybe build voice assistants inside of your company, leveraging your position and making sure you have room to growth. Now that's all I'm going to say. Link is in the description. Check it out, the last link down there. Thanks for watching and see you next time.